Got some walls, we're going to add some slabs. A slab for the floor and a slab for the roof. And we might even add a slab around the outside, which is uh, a paved area. So we're going to go to our slab tool, which we commonly use for floors, but the point is we could use it for roofs, we could use it for benches, we could use it for cupboards, we could use it for whatever we wanted to. We're going to the slab tool, and we see that there's multiple ways of creating this. Again, there is the, the basic, and then there's the composite. So we want the basic method. We want our ground floor slab to be 150 millimeters and we want the top of the slab, the reference plane, to be sitting at zero to this story. Now we can change the material of this if we want to, it doesn't really matter to be honest. Okay, and we're going to now draw around the outside of our shape. So we could do this in a few different ways, but we'll just do it slightly slower way, but it's not that bad which is the polygonal method, meaning we can click on each corner, click, 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 click. Again, you'll see that I'm drawing in a anti-clockwise direction, but to be honest, it doesn't matter all that much. And that's created this shape around the outside edge of the slab. Now, if I go into my option element attributes composites, we'll see that Currently in this file, I don't really have very many composites, so what I'm going to do is just create a new one very, very quickly, and I'm going to call this 270 brick wall. Um, let's just call it cavity brick wall, just so I don't confuse anyone, including myself. So we're going to make this material brick. Now I really dislike the, the settings that we're working with here, they're not at all correct in terms of they're not the normal brick hatch that we should be working with uh, but we'll leave it for now 110 mils thick please insert a skin insert a skin and I'm going to make the middle skin 50 millimeters and I'm going to make that airspace so I've now got a, a brick wall it's not quite the way that I'd like it to look but it will do for now and I don't need it for concrete uh, for a slab, I don't need it for a roof and I don't need it for a, a shell, so I'm just going to use it for the wall tool, okay. And because I'd already designed all these walls to be the right thickness, I can select them, go into the setting and change them to a composite wall structure based on my 270 cavity brick wall. And that's not going to affect my drawing and the way that my drawing works because I put the reference line on the outside and the wall thickness is the same. So it's now working the way that I'd like. Now, why am I showing you this? Why am I spending this time? Because on a cavity brick wall, you might not want your slab to be on the outside face. You might want your slab to be sitting under the internal skin. So we could, in every situation, grab the edge of that wall and offset each edge individually, or we could offset it all together. So we could use this offset all edges and offset this all. We could type it in or we could just use the reference line. 160 millimeters, meaning that all the way around now we have the step down of the slab or the main slab is set to that internal skin. Now the problem of course is that I wouldn't want that to be the case where there's doors. Where there's doors I'd like that to go all the way to the outside edge. So what I could then do is go and add back in that information. So I could select my slab tool and I could just draw the additional slab or I could select the slab tool and go plus and I'll use the rectangular method and add in, uh, let's use the rotated rectangular method because it's being a bit difficult, add in each of those door shapes. Now the other way to do that, there is always more than one way to do anything, is to add new nodes, so select that edge and go to the add new node Hold shift to keep it straight. I'm going to align that with that edge where it currently is. And then offset the edge to get it to there. Now that didn't work very neatly, as it did, it's just hard to see. So I could do that, and that's just repeating the same process, so that my slab is stepping in and out of where I've got my doors. Now that's a bit fiddly. 
particularly when we've got so many doors, but in order to get this slab to work perfectly, that's what we do. Before we do that, because we're sort of wasting time, we're going to copy this slab, and we're going to paste another one on the story above. So double click, edit, paste. Now I want to get rid of this information, so I should have waited, I shouldn't have been impatient. Because what I want to do now, right click, show as trace reference, Trace reference is also this blue and yellow boxes up here. So I can click that to turn that on and then I can choose what I want to see. So right click on the story I want to see, show as trace reference. And now I will offset this again, offset all edges, so that my slab is now going to the outside edge of my slab. So let's select this. In this case, I'm going to change the reference plane to the bottom. I'm going to right click and say show all in 3D window. So I now have a slab on the bottom and a slab on the top and I have a closed building already. Now we're going to look at one more slab before we, or maybe two more slabs, we'll see how we go, before we finish this. I now don't have a slab around the outside edge of my wall, the footing effectively. And I don't have this one around the edge, which is my uh, pathway. So let's add that in. So to add that in, I'm going to use the slab tool again. Now I'm going to try to do this a bit more simply this time. So I'm going to use the rec uh, rotated rectangular method. I'm going to click on the outside face of this wall, click, offset, and I want this path to be 1500 millimeters wide. Now I could just click, but I wouldn't be assured that it would be exactly right. So I'm going to type it in, 1500, enter. Now another way of, meth of drawing would be to add it to it. So again, I'm going to select this slab, left click on the edge, make sure it's got this add to polygon method, click all the way down the bottom, hold shift to make sure it's straight, move across, and again type in 1500. And I'm just going to follow that process all the way around click to the corner, add click, add click, add, it doesn't really matter where I go here right we're not going to have a look at the footing underneath at the moment. That's a little tricky. We'll leave that for a moment. Uh, for now, we've got three slabs. Let's just have a look at all that in 3D again. And now we want this to be slightly set down. So we'll just say that this is minus 80 or 86. So this is one slab, sorry, one brick lower on the outside than on the inside. So this is how we use the slab tool.